What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode from Broke to Millions, uh, where we share everything we know about real estate. Whether you're a novice or a beginner, we're going to make it happen for you. I'm going to share all my skill set. So whatever issues you have in real estate, you can turn it all the way around because here at Nassau, we offer real solutions. Thanks so much for joining. But first, man, before we get started, get off of my man, Walt Pipe and Pipe Pipe. What's up, baby? Oh, no microphone over there. And over in the corner normally would be my man, Wynn, uh, but he is out, not feeling not too well, but he may join us on the chat. I thought we on Zoom. Yeah, I just can't see the Zoom. That's all. Because you got my slideshow. Yeah. So, yeah, man. So today we're going to talk about Burr SU versus the Burr opportunity costs and when it makes sense to sell. So before we get into that though, today this show is sponsored by Vester, uh, truly passive investment platform. And we also have a special guest, Devon Reeves, where this is her platform where you can be accredited or non-accredited and invest in large projects, just like the large institutions. You no longer, uh, will not be an outsider, but in a inclusive process of owning your piece of pie and obtaining closer to financial freedom. Uh, she has this amazing platform. You can invest in hotels, apartments, and other amazing opportunities. And she will share with that uh, later on today. All right. Uh, in case you guys don't know about me, uh, I've been investing since 1999. I lost it all. Uh, Right before the Great Recession, matter of fact, because I lost everything, I was able to go into the Great Recession and stabilize and become wealthy. Uh, on any given day, we could own 1,500 units. We just sold off about five or 600 units just recently. 40 houses, warehouses, land, four hotels, and developing a hotel in Sarasota, Florida, and now looking to do some more developments. Uh, well, actually, we have another 100-acre development further out in Ohio and looking to do something across the country, some oceanfront, okay? Now, today, we're going to get into the Burr and the Burr issue and why, uh, what's the differences and why would you leverage those? I truly, I personally like both of the strategies, but what's the biggest difference? Well, for those who don't know, Burr is by renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. You got to hit the repeat button once you do that. Whereas the Burr SU, same principles, buy, renovate, rent. But instead of refinancing, you sell it. And you're repeating the process again, but you're upgrading to a quality property. Now, I'm going to share with you why would you do that. Like, again, I'm not knocking the Burr strategy. It is a great strategy and it helps maintain equity. But I love being able to upgrade as well. And I'll share with you uh, some of the reasons why I upgraded because I didn't start in some of the best neighborhoods, right? We started in, well, I'm gonna share with you. Let, let's go ahead and talk about some more. Uh, so the pros and cons of the Burr. Uh, well, with the bird, you know, you keeping the property um, and it continues to cash flow and then you can refinance and get money tax free. Uh, but the cons is sometimes you're not refinancing for 100 percent. So if you didn't do a property that has a lot of value or enough value, more value than when you finish, you potentially could be leaving equity in the deal. Cash that you had in your pocket, you may not be able to use it to leverage it to do another deal. And what that does is create opportunity costs, meaning you're missing out on other opportunities because you don't have cash. So if you don't have cash, you don't have cash to obtain another opportunity. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, good. I keep saying that, but I'm, I'm controlling the sides for once. All right, uh, pros and cons of the Burr SU. Now, one of the things about that, you get 100% of the equity out of the deal. That's great. 
I mean, as soon as you finish and you get a stabilizer in it, you're getting your money. And if you do it right and you have certain tax strategies or incentives, you could do a 1031. Uh, if you're using a self-directed IRA or a Roth IRA, you can do it and pull cash out 100% and not pay any taxes on it. And the cons about that is you're losing potential appreciation over a period of time, meaning let's say the house is worth two or 300 and they're appreciated by 10% a year, depending on where you live. Uh, uh, but if it, if that, you know, that's like 20,000 a year, 20,000 a year, it's over a five year period. You could have missed, if you would have held on to that property, you would have made a hundred grand, not including the forced appreciation you created by renting and renovating the property, All right? So if you sell, you know, like there's a lot of deals to give you an example, I've bought multiple properties and sold them. And now they're worth even more. A uh, perfect example, my first two family I bought, uh, and I'm going to share a, about that later, but I bought this two family. It was only worth $75,000. And regardless of the cash flow, that's all that thing was worth. And I bought that, uh, 2003, 2005, somewhere around there. No, I went broke. So I bought that in 1999. Yeah, I bought that in 1999. One of the first houses. So that's, let's see, 20 years later, 20 years later, this same property I paid 75,000 uh, is worth $230,000. Is that worth keeping? I don't know. You know, tell me in the chat. If you had to wait 20 years to, but that, what is that, 150? Yeah, you double, you tripled your money. And make sure that chat's enabled. Uh, is that worth keeping for that period of time? To triple your money over a 20 year period? I don't know, who on here would have kept that property for that long? On oh, Instagram, would you have kept it? Uh, no, <laughs> gathered quick to say, no, nah, that's too long. And uh, I don't necessarily disagree with that because uh, now I'm, I'm finding uh, I'm finding deals that I can 3X my money in five years or less. So there's nothing wrong as long as, but you got to realize over that 20 years, you're going to have a lot of maintenance and upkeep. You know, because there's certain lifelines on a certain property. For example, a water heater only lasts typically seven to 10 years. So after 10 years, you're going to need to get another water heater. Okay. Uh, why do I sell and upgrade? Man, here's some of the main reasons I, I sold. You know, when I first started off, I was buying in DNF areas. And people are like, what's a DNF area? A DNF area is uh, high crime not great school districts, lower income. So there were very challenging properties. There was very high crime. And, you know, these were just not properties. If I something to happen to me, or if I passed, that I could leave my family. So I didn't want to stay in these different properties. But it was great because I generate great cash flow. When you go into typically low income areas, uh, you're probably going to get the property for, I wouldn't necessarily call it discounted, but discounted in comparison to the market. And with that, you can get low entry, cheap properties that cash flow great to get you that 15, 20, 30% cash on cash return. The problem is, when you do property like that, it's a full-time job, like mentally, physically, and spiritually. Because you're a counselor, you're going to be praying to God to get you out of these deals. And uh, it just takes a lot of time. So I started selling those and start moving up to, to see properties. And the great thing, moving up to see, there's just some of the things, like literally in the DNF property, Tenants will call me in November and say, Mr. Mike, I'm going to be late with my rent. And we'll be like, well, what's late? And 
they will come back and say, well, I can have it to you in February when I, I get my tax return. I'm like, man, damn, bro. You, that's November, December, January, four months. Whereas, you know, you move into C, A, and B properties or A, B hotel areas, man, you, you're dealing with more sophisticated or different type of mindset. And so and they're not doing a lot more wear and tear on these properties. Uh, why do I sell an upgrade? Uh, you know, I told you how much time these DNF properties, because when you get a DNF property, you know, everybody can't manage that. Like, I can't just go out and hire somebody to do a DNF property for me. That's just not the kind of market uh, that that's out there. Like, everybody can't manage a DNF property. Well, first of all, because they might get shot. <laughs> ah! Uh, yeah, no, seriously, man. I had employees get robbed. Uh, I had employees shot at. And uh, yeah, they sh it was just too much. I had guest windows get shot out. So first of all, you got the main reason I got, you know, I started getting, I started having kids and I was like, this ain't worth it. Like I'm making money, but is it worth my life? And that's what made me, when I had my kids, I was like, no, nah, I'm out of here. And it was only because I was comfortable, but so it, you can't, it, even if you hire people, you are still really managing that versus when I went and increased and got A and B hotels, I was able to hire, hire, hire better quality management with the skill sets I need, which then freed up my time because now with my apartments, I'm really just checking in once a week. Uh, I check in now and I can check in throughout the week, but Mainly, I do one call a week, and I check with my staff uh, during the week to make sure things are working. Uh, and, and because I did that, I was able to focus more on acquiring better quality properties and raising private capital. I mean, I was able to raise millions of dollars now because I didn't have all my time managing these time-consuming properties. I mean, literally. I was tired of being sick and tired with these properties. And the result of that, I scaled up. I, I, got, uh, I got into hotels. I'm, I'm flying across the country looking at newer projects. Uh, I share three examples of the Burr SU, uh, examples in my, uh, my, my book from Broke to Millions. If you haven't got the book from Broke to Millions, go to from broke to millions com. get your book now. You can learn about uh, some of these, these properties right here I did and netted over a million dollars by using this technique. It's the same thing, buy, renovate, rent, and instead of refinancing, upgrade. But now I will say this. The one thing I do like about the bird, if you can create enough value, right? pull and refinance, pull all your equity out and pull some net proceeds and net cash flow, I'll probably keep the property. I would probably keep that. But if, uh, if I, 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 can, I can't do that, I'm probably not going to burn. I will probably buy, renovate, rent, and sell and then upgrade to a better property. And, and I'm doing it to this day. I've bought properties I held on to, but now I'm in a phase and skill set that I'm upgrading. Like I bought a lot of properties in Westwood, Queen City. Uh, for those of you in Cincinnati, that was a uh, blighted, high crime area, but I knew they were coming in renovating. Like they put, I, I wanna say a billion, but I, I think it was a couple hundred million in renovating and tearing down the blighted areas and creating a park. And now they're going to bring in a new uh, bridge or viaduct, which will open the lanes as well. And they're going to spend more money expanding. So it's all about location as well. Uh, so that's why I like the Burr SU. Uh, 
but here's the deal. I did a Burr SU as well. Now, I, I will say, though, I did renovate it. All right? We're good? Oh. I did renovate it, and we did refinance it, but I ended up reselling it. Uh, I sold it, and we netted $5 million. Now, that was worth it. Now, who on here would like to make $5 million? Is that a yes or no? Yes or yes? Anybody want to refinance uh, by doing one of these bursts? Like, yes, Paulette's all in, and Catherine's in. Yes and yes, Jasmine. So, yes, Joe. Like, these are the reasons why we do these type of deals. It's all about timing, but the great thing that allowed me, the reason why we held on to it, because we were – we did this deal right here, and what it was a total it was a total of ninety seven units, and I believe uh, it was a mixture of uh, four different locations. With one location, we were able to refile, pull all the money out, and have the other properties free and clear. So that's why we were cash flowing, and it was worth keeping. So we just waited, continued to increase rents. And when the market was there, we sold it. And I think we, we I don't know, we bought this for 12 a door, 13 a door, something like that. And we ended up selling on an average of 47 to 52 something a unit. I mean, that's why you sell. Uh, and here's the profit. If you look down at the bottom on this bottom right screen, $4.9 million profit. I mean, those are days I live for. I love doing real estate deals, especially when I'm making a profit. Because <laughs> I've done many deals where we didn't make one. Uh, it was total of 137 units. We purchased it for a million bucks. And the renovations was $600,000. Um, but look, I didn't have the money. I didn't know where to raise the money at. Um, well, how do we do it? Well, we end up doing something using our no money down techniques, how to negotiate. Now, the good thing was not the good thing, but the good thing for us, the existing owner was losing 10,000 a month. He didn't want to give, uh, he, no banks wanted to give us a loan on the deal uh, it was dilapidated and he upgraded and the seller was older and he wasn't doing well. And he personally developed these multifamilies. So once we could, we confirmed we couldn't get bank finance and we went back to the guy and told him terms of the deal. And guess what? He financed $850,000 for us. See, here's the thing. He really didn't want to sell. He really wanted the cash flow. The only reason was selling because he wasn't in health. He wasn't healthy enough to literally take care of his buildings. So what we did, we gave him 150 cash. That took care of any bad debt or anything he had. And then he financed it. And so now he was getting positive cash flow a month. And guess what? We got a property with minimum money, minimum money in the deal. Now we had 150 down and then we raised another, I don't know, 400,000, 500,000 and got the deal done and renovated. Uh, but here I, I jumped, like I said, but Nate, neither I didn't have 150,000 cash, nor do we have that 750. And Nate just came out of bankruptcy. So I'm like, I'm literally, I'm, this was me. Hmm. How do we do this deal? And, uh, we end up reaching out to our group, our community, to our different people. I mean, that's what's so important of being a part of your network. I tell you time and time again, your net worth is your network. So if you want to increase your net worth, increase your network. And we called everybody we knew and we found a group. And here's this. The partners we end up working out with, they brought money and they brought operations. So really, Nate and I just played the big deal maker. Now, we did get involved with the construction because that's Nate's key thing. But we did a lot of construction, and he was able to make it happen. And we signed the deal. I found the deal. 
Nate did the construction. We hooked up with some partners that had the skill set and could raise money. And I limited our time. These are amazing deals. And this is what you got to focus on. A lot of times, guys, you, a lot of you guys want to go out there and do everything yourself. Look, I'm telling you, it could be overbearing, all right? Overbearing, overwhelming. Uh, and, and the only way you're going to get it done is if you put a team together. And it takes time. And you're going to have some trials and error. Even with our operations now, like, we still have issues. But we work through them. Um, just like I was just saying, you got to become that big deal maker. I'm looking at a deal. Well, we ain't got to go there yet because I don't want to share about that yet. But my deal in Sarasota, uh, my partners, I, uh, my operator, not only my third party operator, they brought the deal. Um. Uh, I went and got a guy, a developer, who I met through social media, through our community, Rodrigo. Rodrigo put everything together. I then partnered, well, actually, some, some individuals reached out to want to raise capital, so we gave them the opportunity to do that, and we went out and raised uh, $8 million. And then we put the deal together. Now, what have I done? I'm not dealing with the day-to-day -day operations. I am managing, and I do weekly, at least two weekly calls with them and, and then on a major important meetings. Like, this is financial freedom and leveraging everyone else's expertise. Now, when you get to this position, you got to know a little bit about everything. You just can't raise capital. I mean, you can, but if you find raise capital, you got to have, make sure you got the right skill set to manage this. What you really want to be is that big deal maker, all right? Focus more on that instead of trying to do all this deal. Uh, and why did we sell that deal? I mean, opportunity cost. Listen, that deal on the fuel was a C property. There was no future upside. It wasn't going to get any better. I mean, if I would have hung around for the inflation, but now... If I'd have waited, I would have missed out. But because we sold those, it freed up some of my cash, and now I had cash to fund the initial beginning of my Sarasota development. I had three, what, five, six hundred grand to put down for earnest money and pre development costs because I sold that deal. That's a definite upgrade. Like once you in deals for long, a long time and they're not working for you and you feel like you maxed it out, you squeezed all the pennies out of it, sell and then get into the big boys. Here's my Hampton Inn. Here's my Staybridge Suite. Now, listen, I netted, what, when it was all said and done, we netted, what, just shy of a million each out of all the partners. This stay bridge alone nets 1.2 million. And really it netted, it netted that after debt. That's why you want to sell an upgrade. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes or yes. Yes or yes. Did that make sense to you guys? And listen, I know one thing. I need to know if y'all really listening. Nobody told me where they were from. You know the routine. I got the yes and yes, but nobody told me where you were checking in from. You got to check in. Where are you checking in from today? On Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Where are you going? You know the deal. You can't let me go past that. All right, we got everybody from checking in from there. Jacob from Jacob. I'm your neighbor. Of course you're a Paula. <laughs> All right. Huntsville, we love that. So uh, this is why we do the Burr SU. Uh, now, lessons learned. You know, I want to go a little deeper in here, and I probably should sign this for the big deal maker. I mean, my uh, mastermind set. Uh, yeah, I, I am, but I'm, I mean, going through this process, learning everything, 
you want to be a de- deal maker. Matter of fact, me and Nate were on the phone today and I found, well, I didn't find actually a, a, one of our students. Uh, uh, he found an amazing oceanfront deal. Just amazing. And to the point, it's like, I'm all in. Like, I don't even need to see the numbers. I'm in. I'm doing that project. And when Nate knows if I'm that passionate about that project or something, he's he can't stop. It. He'll try to out talk you because that's what we do. We tell each other before the deal even comes out, before we even know. That's a dumbass deal. But let me see it. <laughs> you know, we want to dumb ourselves down. But I was like, I'm going all in because after we do a project like this, we would never need to do another project. It's that big. And he said, no, Mike, remember financial freedom. We don't want to occupy our time. We want to, we want to occupy our time with the things we want to do. So we're just going to put deals together and guess what? We're going to go out and find another deal just like that and put it together in another 30 to 60 days. Cause that's what we do. So with that lesson, and all these guys, you want to be the big deal maker because if I if, if if I was the guy running every single deal, first of all, I wouldn't own a hotel right now. I would have been limited in my capital. I wouldn't have been able to raise money. I wouldn't be able to talk to you wonderful people every day. I wouldn't be able to gr- create this beautiful community where people could share deals and learn and, and level up and be on the same level and educate each other. Literally, you are one big deal away and one big partner away. Because guys, I just found me another big deal. Life changing. Uh, But you might be wondering, how do you find partners like that? It is challenging. How do you know people? And you know, that's one of the biggest things people always ask me. How do you find the right partner? We talked about this in OPM intensive, but one of the first things is um, the goals. What is your goal? What is the partner's goal? And if the goals are aligned, then you go after it. Uh, But what if, you know, but then sometimes uh, personalities have to blend. Like you got to connect because, you know, when you partner with somebody, you're there for a long time, right? It's like a marriage. So you have to put those things in perspective. And you got to get educated. So where can you go find real good people in a community that are educated and can do things like this? Uh you can now uh, you can do what we did, call everyone you know. Literally, we called everyone I know, and everybody was like, no. And, and it took me two years to find uh two million dollars. And that was because I had no idea what I was doing. I was so busy running my mouth instead of listening. And and maybe you do find the people with money. Cause I did. I found a billion dollar company that was backing me on my first deal. But guess what? I had to kick them out because they tried to bully me and kick me out of my own project. So I can tell you one great way where you can find it is you join the, the Big Deal Maker Mastermind. Uh, so many of our students have joined together, joined forces to do great things together and having so much success and building experience. And not only that, we're, we're doing things We're not like these typical places, these masterminds where um, they talk to you, get you all excited, and then what? After the weekend's over, nobody talks to you anymore? No, we actually put actions. We, We literally put verbs in our plans, right? Action steps. So much, not only will you get training and action steps, we created a fund that our students can be a part of, can help raise capital and help find deals to put things together. 
That's the thing that you'll do at the Big Dell Ma Maker Mastermind. And it's so relevant for you guys that you can and win with deals like this. M my deals, one of these great deals I just found because of this mastermind group. I found great employees and, and, and partners because of this mastermind group. Uh, Tim Vest, I mean, he's done over $100 million in deals. Tim has taken what I've taught him uh, that took me 20 years. He's done in 18 to 24 months just by joining the Big Deal Maker and having one-on-one -on -one calls. So when, you, when I'm on there, when you join our course, I'm there teaching. And then we have breakout coaches. It's an amazing opportunity for you guys. Uh, here's Jessica Buck. Now, Jessica, I'll call her my late bloomer. <laughs> Jessica, uh, and I can't say it's a late bloomer. It just takes time. When you're dealing multifamily deals, you're not, it's not a get rich. You're not going to go, I mean, it's possible. But a lot of times you're not just going to go find a deal the next day. Jessica, actually, she took the class for, I don't know, six months to a year. And it probably took her another year to find a deal. And when she did, she found 142 unit. Now you tell me, is that worth two years? And listen, she could have been taking two years to buy, to rehab, I don't know, 50 to 100 units. But all that work she did in two years, she did it in one buy. You understand that? And she doesn't have to run day to day. And it's in her hometown. Look, if you're interested in something like this, just uh, go to our email, bigdealmakermastermind at gmail.com. Bigdealmakermastermind at gmail.com. I mean, we have so many great success stories. Malika, she's now has her sons doing the Dia, she's killing it in the Airbnb rental, but now she's moving to, she found her niche where she's buying the smaller motels and converting them into hotels, right? With the Airbnb uh, uh, feel, culture. Alex Chan, I think he's on here now. I mean, he did over 100, 800 units as a private investor. Yeah, you don't have to be excellent. Now he's doing ADU, ADU uh, additional dwelling units out in California. I mean, he's doing amazing things. Brian, he just read my book and went out and killed it. And now he's like, man, I got this, so many nuggets from reading your book. He joined the mastermind and has done even more. He's bought larger portfolios. I mean, so many different things. Just joined the uh, Big Deal Maker. All right, so now... I'm going to bring in my good friend and my partner and one of the uh, superstar ladies that she invested, raised capital for one of our first two hotel deals. Everybody give it up for Devon Reeves. Everybody, Devon Reeves. Devon, where you at, dear? I guess we got a promoter to panelists here, and I got to write this up. There we go. Oh. Oh, you gotta you gotta let me uh show Coming my now. Mike, you gotta let me show my face. Oh yeah. Oh he's he's getting there. Oh, okay. Yep, there you go. Hey Davon. Now I can see your face, Mike. Hey. What's going yeah. on, D? There you go. Hey Mike. Hey, wonderful. How you been? Good. You know what? I always learn from you every time you talk. Really? What, what you learned today? What I learned today? <laughs> well, I like the owner. No, I'm for every time you talk. Look, so what today I learned about, hold on. Here we go. There we go. So today you talked about the owner financing deal. Well, really, I like how you structure your deals, right? So you always take a very complicated problem and then simplify it. And you know how people say, oh, because a lot of times what people, they stop from doing their big deal or doing a deal period is for one is the mindset. And then two is they're looking at where they are at the moment, meaning, okay, well, I don't have the money to do it. Mm -hmm. right? But you basically talk about there's a way, there's a way to do it. And there's a way that you can do it, even if you don't have the money right now, because there's so much capital out there. So you basically break it down like, okay, 
find a deal and then we can help you find the money so that way you get to the closing table. You know, it's funny you say that. I had so many people come to me like, man, you take something so complex, complex, convoluted and just make it sound so simple and easy. I was like- That's because you know what you're doing. So if you know what you're doing, you can explain it because you, you're an expert in it. Oh, thank you. I didn't know that. Oh, that if makes sense. You, if, you, if you can't explain it to a sick, if you can't explain it to a third grader, then you don't know what you're doing. Uh, and I, I, I always, because I've talked to, I go into the room and and I go these and these highfalutin people and sometimes I'm the only one in the room and they're talking all high and mighty and using all these verbiage and you know trying to impress everybody and I'm like you come in with your shirt just like you coming with that same shirt yeah you know I go in these meetings like this and and then, and then I'm like so what you're telling me is in a, a certain drought, you're looking for an economic driver in a three to five mile radius. And so they need to make this much money in order for you to support that. What? Yeah. yeah. I said, well, mm -hmm. why the fuck you say that? <laughs> yeah. You just simple, you just simplify a, hey, your numbers guy. So yeah. just simplify. Uh, it, I'm like, like how you do that, Mike? You're like, hold on. You do it on your phone. Figure out a whole value. Yeah, no, man. Like, less than five minutes. Yeah, you know, well, and, and you know, one thing that makes it so easy, it is mindset. Yeah. For a perfect example, all I, in the last, I don't know, last three years, two years, I said, you know what? I want oceanfront property. Mm -hmm. It's the last two or three years. So with no money, mm -hmm. not sure how I'll be able to pay for it, not sure what I'm looking for, I just went out looking at oceanfront property. Mm -hmm. and because I went and looked at ocean for a problem a couple of things happened there I'm talking about mindset one oh wow I'm really here mm -hmm. oh wow this looks great and then you start looking at other things now you have something to compare it to mm -hmm. and then I missed out on some deals that I mm -hmm. thought were great and then I'll see something even better right 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 and so what happens, you start getting the mindset and then you see what's doable. You mm -hmm. see what's possible, even when you don't. And then over the two, three years I've been looking at property, guess what? I learned more about how to structure a deal. Mm -hmm. And the deals got bigger. Mm -hmm. Like literally, we were looking at uh, billion dollar projects. Mm -hmm. And trust well, me. Well, your goal is to get a billion dollars in real estate. Well, we found we found we found a project anywhere from a billion to five billion. See what I'm saying? And but you have to start saying these things. Mm -hmm. You have to and you have to believe it too. Like you have to say it and you have to believe it and you have to put it out there in the universe. And then a lot of times people put things out there and they try to they try to figure out where well, you're stopping the universe from putting together, like like for example, with you. You said that you want to get a billion dollars in real estate that and you put it out there in the universe. So the universe hears you. Now, all of these things are happening. I'm sure when you were thinking about that, hotel wasn't a part of the equation, right? So now hotels are a part of the equation. Now you're doing mixed use development. All these, now you got the team players. I came, all these different peoples are coming and systems are being put in place. And so now your, your vision and your dream of a billion dollars in real estate is coming closer probably than you thought. I had no idea how I was going to get there. Didn't know what it was going to look like. Right. Then, but after you say it, you keep talking about it, yeah. and you start to realize, well, this is possible. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to share, you know, that's. Uh, you know, I don't even think you know this. So, probably before I met you, because I got connected to you through Nick's side, right? So, Mike, you guys, he was talking about relationships. So, relationships are key, right? You definitely want to. Can stay connected with people. So I met Mike through a college friend, Nick Sai Song. She was a real estate broker, her hotel broker. And yeah. so she got connected to Daniel Wynn, right? Yeah. And then, then he connected me to you. And so my goal was to get a hotel before my, so, so my grandmother died in January, 2020, right before like the COVID pandemic, everything shut down. And I felt so bad because my goal was to, check her into my to my hotel and I never did it so my goal was I was like you know what to pay homage to her I'm gonna get a hotel prior to February 6 2021 because that was her birthday 
and we closed in Arena, Oklahoma in November 2020. Yeah, that was so amazing. That was so you guys see, all I did was just put it out there in the universe. I didn't know, didn't know anything about El Reno, didn't know about anything. And and just but put it out there in the universe and doing the work and making making the connections like you didn't know how I was gonna raise the capital, but we did it. And uh well, you, and it you just gotta take action. Mm -hmm. You just can't keep talking about it. You literally have to move towards it and take action. And you can do that by educating yourself. And and here you are uh from the front desk to the top desk. To the to the owner's desk. The, the owner's box. <laughs> Let's say the owner's box. I like that. The owner's box. And now you've created this platform uh, that gives opportunity to people all over the country mm -hmm. for all types of deal. Tell yeah. us about what you're working now. Did you want to show a slideshow? You just want to talk about what you want. Oh, what I didn't. Do, I didn't. Um, it don't matter. We can talk. I mean, I don't know if we got enough time. We could just talk. I don't think we have enough time for a slideshow. So anyway, so look, we look. Mike and I, we just go on and just talking like we always do. But for those who don't know who I am, my name is Davon Reed. Thank you, Mike, for the introduction. My partners with Mike on three of his four hotels: the Home Two Suites in El Reno, the uh, Hampton Inn and Suites in Scottsburg, Indiana, and the State Bridge. Uh, in suites in Indianapolis Fishers. And I recently launched Vester, which is a crowdfunding platform where you can invest in commercial real estate as well as raise capital, right? So that, and the reason why I created this platform, because during that raising capital process, as you know, Mike, it's, you, it's very difficult to market to raise capital, right? Unless you're, without taking too much time and boring y'all with the details, without being, without having certain regulations, you can get in trouble. You can't just say, Hey, I need a million dollars. Y'all want to invest in my hotel. It doesn't work that way. You'll get in trouble. And we don't want those problems, right? We don't want to deal with the alphabet boys, right? So I created this platform so that way it can be easier for, you know, when Mike, when he raised capital to get to his billion dollar, uh, you know, real estate portfolio. And for some, because not everybody want to own and we get that. Some people just want to passively invest. They're like, hey, you know what, Mike? I like what you do. You know how to make money. I want to make money with you, but I'm not trying to do the work. So how about you do the work and I'll just invest with you, right? So that's essentially what Vester is. It's a crowdfunding platform where you can invest directly in the assets. We do have some assets on our platform. Uh, we have um, a Holiday Inn Express. Mike's deal is coming up next, right? But currently at the moment, um, so if you're not ready for the two deals I'm about to mention, it's okay because Mike is coming. So you got enough time to get you ready for Mike's deal. So we have a Holiday Inn Express. Um, where that's a hotel investment development deal in Louisiana. And then we have the uh, a retail investment opportunity where you can invest in Walgreens. Uh, so you're investing in a land to develop a Walgreens. Um, I can put the investor.com. We put it in the chat for the people that's on. Uh, if you don't know where I got it, logo. Look, I'm branded today. So investor.com. Oh yeah, you know I got to stay on brand. So investor.com. And another reason why I created this platform is that um, both, accredited and non-accredited investors, they actually can invest. So for those who don't My know- goodness, That's amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's explain yeah. what that means. Yeah, so an accredited investor is someone who makes over 200,000 a year or they have a net worth of a million dollars or more. So basically uh, prior to 2012, uh, the uh, former president of the Obama administration, they created a jobs act where uh, non-accredited investors can invest. So basically what was happening the rich were saying richer because the non-accredited investors couldn't invest in certain opportunities. And now it's possible, right? And so with this platform, you're able to invest in commercial real estate. And what that means, and one some of the benefits, tax benefits, what Mike's I'm sure he talks about, um, as well as changing your balance sheet, right? Because you're getting direct equity into multi-million dollar assets. So that changes your balance sheet it helps your net worth and that's how you really become uh, be be become wealthier. Okay. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So mm -hmm. now you got this up and running. Mm -hmm. Why is it so beneficial to, to the market? Like what's so different about you and CrowdStreet? Real, realty, whatever. I don't even remember all the Oh, Realty Mogul. Yeah, our competitors. So the difference between CrowdStreet and uh, Realty Mogul, um, 
a fundraise. So again, we accept non. So Crowd Street, and I believe Realty Mogul, you have to be an accredited investor to invest. And then also with Crowd Street and Realty Mogul, you have to have a certain amount of real estate in your portfolio, right? So, you know, when you first start off, you don't have a million, hundred million dollars in your portfolio. As, as Mike, as he's shown you, you know, throughout his career, he definitely didn't start off that way, right? And so, including myself. So that limits people who really need to get access to capital outside their net worth. And so with crowd with the crowdfunding platform, um, people are able who are just starting out or maybe done their second or third deal and they need to get additional capital or they're just not good at raising capital. Ca raising capital was hard. I know Mike makes it really pretty, <laughs> but <laughs> it is very hard. When you've done it, it's very hard. It's very stressful. It can be rewarding, but that's not everybody's ministry. So what... what <laughs> Take them to the, the church, baby. Take yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not everybody's ministry. It's, it's hard. And so... Um, it may think of Vester as an additional marketing platform to help you raise capital. Um, it helps you market the deal to the investors It uh, because we're able to market because we're, re we're regulated by FINRA and the SEC. So we're able to go out and say, hey, you all, you can, you know, you can, uh, here's a deal that you can invest in. So that that's what makes us different is that it just it we're we're looking at um more of the retail investors are looking at the real estate developers and, and uh, or people who are trying to acquire who are, who are just getting started or maybe have like a mid-level real estate portfolio. Hey, will you go back? Cause you know, I want, you know, we got some novice and even some like, skilled and, you know, tell them what fin, who is FINRA? Like what they got to do, you know, like FICO, why are they taking money out of my taxes? What's FINRA got to do with that? That is a great question. Yeah, FINRA is, stands for the Financial Industry Regulatory Authorities. And so basically what that means, they monitor, their, goal, their job is to protect the investors, okay? That's literally the job. Same thing as the SEC. Their job is to protect the investors. And so FINRA, they regulate financial advisors, broker dealers, um, you know, crowdfunding platform. So we were under compliance. So it's a lot of things that we can and cannot do uh, based off of FINRA regulations, right? Um, again, because our job is to, so we have to disclose information, it's different process. So, um, you know, it was a, it took a while to get approved. <laughs> yes, it did. I remember. It you took went. a very long time. Um, I was praying for that every day. I'm telling you I was. Um, and so it, because it, to me, that was harder than closing on a hotel in a, in a, in a house. I mean, that, that's, that's when we get into like, choose your heart, right? Like, yeah. listen, guys, everything can be done. What, what Devon just did here, that's some hard work. Why is it hard? Because you're stepping into an industry you're not really familiar with. Well, not really familiar, but it's the paperwork and the process yeah. and, yeah. and things are out of control and you don't really have a relationship and, and you got to be patient. And like, how, how long did it take you to put this all together? So I came up probably with the idea in January, 2020. No, 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 December, 2019. And then, no, 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 21, 2021, 2020, January, 2021. And then I thought it was going to take like nine months. Mm -hmm. uh, we launched in July, 2022. So clearly there was some other, and because we, so another thing that took a long time, we built the technology from scratch. That's right. So we came in with one idea and Fenner was like, nope, it's not going to work. So we got to change that. <laughs> so we didn't have to rechange the entire website. The whole, we had to change the entire business model. And, um, as Mike mentioned on bringing on teams and experts. So we brought on, I'm, I've, I've, I'm pretty good at building teams. I'm pretty good at identifying who's the right person. And so we brought in a FINRA attorney who helped us throughout the process. It probably would have. That was a great idea. It, it took a, it probably, we probably still would have been trying to get approved if we didn't have a FINRA attorney um, to help us along the way of, you know, building this. And then, so then I brought, I'm not, I don't, I don't know how to code and that's not my ministry and I probably will never learn how to code and I'm okay with that. So I brought in a, a technology partner who knows how to code. That's what they do. They build websites. And so they built the website. I'm not a process person. 
So I brought in a project manager. Um, so he he right. he's a compliance person. So you're again, systems. you're a systems person. I, I'm horrible at operations. I'm uh, and you know you know you've worked with me for a long enough. You're like I'm not dealing with that. Yeah. And I'm like y'all better. It's like y'all better get you better come get somebody for this because I ain't doing this. You're not doing it. It's okay. I, we love you. you I need got to- big, I would love to be so detailed, but I was like, man. My brain can't focus on it. I need the big picture and, and I'm gonna fill in like these are the missing blanks. Like yeah. get it together. Yeah, yeah. And so so again, it just comes as Mike mentioned, it comes with practice, right? So I'm also a coach of the big deal maker mastermind. And so that's what we help the students building teams, right? So we're basically teaching you all the mistakes and things that we wish we would have learned. Like we would have had an academy or a vaster crowdfunding platform. Oh my gosh, how many hotels we would have had? Mike would have been had his billion dollar portfolio because you learning from mistakes and not even that, but you're learning from people who've actually done it. And they're and we're actually like giving you the secret sauce. So it was no holding back. And one of the things I like about Mike's mastermind, not even just because I'm a coach, I'm not even being biased, but it's that if you find a, a deal he'll actually like it was people in the group that will actually work with you to really help you get help you get to the closing table you know what I mean and so not a lot of masterminds that are out there they're doing it and also there's not a lot of masterminds where you can learn about apartments and hotels like it's a lot of it's a lot of apartments and multifamily masterminds but hotels it's not a lot of hotel masterminds where you have people that's living, including myself, that's literally going to walk you through and connect you with the team members and the people that you need that get you to the closing table. Because hotels, that's a different space in itself. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, one of the other great things about you is now, I think it's still dependent on projects, but typically, like, what's the entry level the amount you typically have to invest in a deal versus some of your projects? Because, like... Isn't there like a minimum investment required? Like you go to these other platforms, you got to put. Oh it. yeah, they they do have them. So ours is set by the sponsor, right? So, okay. so we have the uh, retail deal. The minimum to invest is fifteen thousand, and 15, then fifteen thousand. Yeah, it's fifteen thousand for the minimum. Oh my to gosh! Invest. And then the minimum to invest in a hotel is twenty five thousand. Now, other other folks, sometimes their minimum is a hundred thousand. Sometimes their minimum is fifty thousand. Um, but with our, 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 our platform, again, both accredited and non-accredited can invest. And then also sometimes when people hear that number, they get like shocked, like, wait a minute, I don't have that in my bank account, but you may have that in your retirement account. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, what's so great is you have multiple people that we touched in a market. Um, we, now we're hitting both markets, but we're not leaving people out. Like be prior to this. There's no way you could get into a deal like this and, and and literally have brick and mortar unless you went through the stock market. Right. We're and creating, return isn't as high either. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, because you're paying all these points to multiple brokers. Like mm-hmm. one broker or one, not even a broker, a developer can have a deal mm-hmm. and they get with a broker and they take their fees for introducing them to that money guy. And then that money guy syndicates from another guy. Like there's fees on top of fees, top of fees. So yeah. by the time it gets to you, it's only a three, four percent return. Yeah. Whereas there was supposed to be 20, 30 percent. Yeah. You're yeah. cutting out all the middlemen. And that's why, like your platform, like am I correct for saying this? But typically you're dealing directly with the developer sponsor. Mm-hmm. So yeah. these investors will be able to deal directly with the person you're just providing a platform to I'm, just, I'm just the platform and that's another, and that's another thing that separates us from crowd street and realty mogul so so for instance mike or whoever and they want to put a deal in our platform we're literally just a platform we're not taking any ownership in your deal we're so we're not taking any equity out of your deal we're not partnering no, we're literally just a platform once you raise your capital you'll say thank you investor and we would love for you to come back but that's one of the benefits because a lot of times people, they don't want to partner with people because they don't want to give up equity. We do that's take right. a fee. So we take 5% of the capital that's being raised. That's that that's our fee for, you know, help brokering a deal for the capital, but we're not taking any equity and we're not looking to partner and we're not making any decisions on a deal. 
That's amazing. That's amazing. Hey, what we're going to uh, take questions now because we, we're getting close to our time. Uh, what questions out there? Uh, everybody's been checking in. Yeah, if you scroll down there, um, I'm getting started in real estate. I think by doing the bird kind of any advice. Hold on, let me. Lamont says, I need help getting started in real estate. Think about doing the bird kind of any advice. Apps, first of all, I'm going to say I'm going to let Dave on say it, but listen, don't be hard headed like me. I went out and learned everything on my own. And I, I, it's not that I didn't ask questions. Right. I really watch people from afar, but yeah. that's my personality. Yeah. Uh, and my wife fuss at me. I like, I don't want to pay for classes, but I, oh my gosh, if I would have just, as Devon was saying, if I would have paid for classes and invested in myself and, and quit being cheap, because the prices ain't changed. The courses back then, when I was coming in the 80s and 90s, was 1500 They still 1500 plus. And I would have learned so many different things and, and probably skipped over so many hurdles if I would have been in it. Because I would have been in a community that not only that, once I did something and showed what I could do, they would introduce you to another level. So some of you looking at just taking a course, but you also buying into a community as well. Yeah. That's really what you're buying into. It's really the community. Yeah, I mean, you 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 invest in it more like my people. So I say all that is a Lamont. Absolutely join the Burr Academy. Absolutely join Big Deal Maker. Um, mm -hmm. and, and and maybe one other, but honestly, I don't think you need any other courses unless you go with Dia because she's doing hotels, or maybe you want to focus more on raising capital. Like, invest in yourself. Stay within budget you know, uh, but spend money on you. Instead of buying the Gucci's and the new iPhone, buy a course. Yeah, And is. the course is really a consultant, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. That's really all it is. So that way, then when you join masterminds, you get that one-on-one, because -on -one. sometimes you can do an online, online course and you get the information, but sometimes you have questions, right? You don't understand it. And so with that mastermind, you can ask one-on-one -on -one questions, maybe Maybe you're afraid to ask a question and you have people in your community that can talk to you and kind of walk you through it. Um, and then also you're joining like-minded individuals, right? Oh owning apartments and owning hotels. That's a whole, I can't even talk to, my family members are still trying to figure out what I'm doing. My mama <laughs> still don't, she still don't know what I'm doing, right? Because some people just can't wrap their yeah, brain. Your mom over there like, here come bro, man. <laughs> exactly, right? Bro, so, man from the fifth floor. Exactly. Right. So there, you know, so you have to get with like-minded individuals. So if you say like Mike, I'm sure he can't tell everybody I want to get billion dollars in real estate. They're going to look at him like, what, what are you talking about? You won't be able to do that. But somebody like me, I'm like, let's go, let's get it together. And that's what, that's what the mastermind it. That's when you join communities like that. Cause it's like-minded individuals. So y'all pushing each other and y'all helping each other. Cause y'all both have a comp somewhat of a similar common goal. Hey, Walt, was there any other questions further down? I can't see in there. Uh, I think that's that in, a lot uh, of it was answered in the chat. Jose talking about Notre Dame, baby. <laughs> Dreams were, oh, he he just saw that. Dreams. Oh, uh, got the, the, build, build, yeah. uh, uh, the big deal maker. Uh, yeah, dream, hey, Joe, that was amazing. I oh, saw that, uh, that video the other day. Dreams without goals are just dreams and hopes lead to disappointment. Consistency. I talk about that other year. Uh, Kachun Lu, hopefully I'm saying that right. What is SU and the Burr SU? And the SU is sell and upgrade. Typically, oh. where the SU is, that would go for uh, refinance, repeat. And upgrading is in the saying repeating, but we're taking it up a notch. Mm -hmm. So now when I do deals, I won't go backwards. Mm -hmm. if I can't keep upgrading. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and now that I'm, I'm really just closing up shop on things that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'll still do opportunities, but if they're not major developments or like transformation, I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm interested in that. Like, oh, I'm reading the chat. Thanks, thanks, Alex, for your comment. He's saying that he knows uh, Nick Sai, and yeah. thank you, thank you. How young can a student be to take the master class? 
Yeah. What was the question? It said, how young can the students be to take the master class? Man, you can be as young as you, you, you know, as long as you know some math uh, <laughs> and you can read. I mean, I, seriously, like my kids, I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of this. Um, and I, I don't want to get too off topic, but first of all, I, it, as, as long as they could comprehend some math and everything, I make this really simple. And then it's just putting in, like, it, it'll take some time for them to comprehend, but my son, matter of fact, Nate's son can tell you, break down numbers and tell you all about it. And he's only 15 years old, maybe 16, he may just turn 16. My kids know about profit and loss and internal rate of return and cash on cash return. And they're 14, 12, and nine. I love it. And so, I and I and I take I take my son, he my son is well, he can't join master class, but he's what four and he done by the time he get uh your kids age, he's gonna be talking about hotels as many Zoom calls he listening. He can't in. he can't help but be talking about uh raising <laughs> capital and doing hotels. <laughs> Cause that's all he hear about. <laughs> that's he be, all. Everybody he, got a job. He be buying a journey on the Zoom calls. <laughs> hey, if he ain't a, a, a motivational speaker and, and a, 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 everything else, uh, the CEO of all CEOs, I mean, cause baby boy be right beside mama when it goes down. So uh, yeah, no, I, I, I would encourage you to teach him young as possible. Yeah, I mean, I was saying that I, I, I spent so much time coaching my kids in sports. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. I want, I want, I want when my kids play, I want them to be able to do that crossover. I want them to make the layups and the three pointers. I, I want them to make them spectacular catches on the yeah. football field. And I don't regret any of it because I love coaching, because I'm still teaching in that coaching moment, but. I'm now questioning, man, I probably should have put more time in teaching them real estate. Hmm. I got hours and hours. I, 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 I'm talking past thousands of hours of coaching. And uh, your, your kids are learning, even if they don't really comprehend, they learning by when they watching you. So they're, when you're doing it, they're doing it. Yeah. Whether they care or not, they're going to do it. I remember my dad used to play all this gospel music and he was always doing church and everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, here he goes again with this eight track of gospel music. And now we're in church service and I'm back at it. <laughs> Instead of eight track, I got the satellite and YouTube and, uh, and, and following all those principles. So mm -hmm. I encourage you on that. Uh, let's do one more question, and then uh, that'll be it. Anything on Facebook or Instagram? I can't see from over here. Instagram's got something here. Okay. Anything else, Walt? Okay. Devon, you got anything else you want to tell them about before we get out of here and move on to the next one? Well, thank you, Mike, for having me here. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, somebody say go Steelers. I'm going to say go Eagles. I bleed green, even on my background purple. But um, if you all are interested in learning more about how you can raise capital or invest in the deals, visit us at Vester.com. That's V-E-S-T-E-R-R.com. And if you have any questions for me, definitely contact me. I'm on Instagram or join the mastermind. And I'm one of the coaches there as well. So uh, thank you again. Happy, have a happy Thursday. Thank you so much, Dave Long. See you soon. Talk to y'all tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Oh, and I guess it's time for that now, that millionaire mindset, brother. Now it's time for Mike's millionaire mindset yeah we talk about mindset but what is the mindset how do you get into the mindset what do you need to do and it's really just taking action 
It's it's believing in what what it is that you want and going after it, even if you don't have the right information. I was sharing earlier how I just wanted beachfront property, and I didn't know where the money was coming from. Uh, I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. I didn't even know what the beachfront property would look like. I just went after it. And I went after multiple deals, visited multiple locations. And guess what? I put in offers that didn't get accepted or didn't work out. Or I went and spent money to get there and it just didn't work out. And then three years later, we find this amazing property that could be worth billions, but it is worth billions. And so I learned through all, but listen here, even with this opportunity, I wouldn't be there if I didn't take the risk and try before. I talked about how when I first did my first development, I had no idea what I was doing and we lost money. Now, listen, I don't advise jumping into a development just because you want to do it. Uh, but everything's about having the right team. And probably if I had the right team at that time, I would have completed that deal, but I don't know if I would have been happy. I wouldn't have learned as much. It, it, you know, I, I was talked about God will delay your dreams to get you into your purpose. And I got delayed multiple times <laughs> and, and uh, uh, some money snatched out of my pocket. But it was because of those things I was prepared and able to recognize when the opportunity exists. And so, you know, what, what I'm telling you is don't worry about, you don't have this mindset of how is it going to get done? Don't worry about it. Just go after your dream. Go after it. And you're going to fail. Uh, you're not going to know what's happening. But if you bold enough and, 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 and have the audacity to believe big enough, you will get, you will receive direction. It will be revealed to you. And the only reason I can tell you is, ask me how I know. I've been through so many ups and so many downs. You know, like I said, it's, it, it's literally been a roller coaster ride. But the ride is thrilling. And so in your life, you're going to have these, these roller coasters going after your dream. But if you stick to what the goal is and take action steps and has a vision, you will be successful. The only reason you don't become successful is you quit. Yeah, I know. But it's hard, Mike. The only reason, and again, the only reason you're not successful is because you quit. There's no secret sauce because in those times of, of trying, you're going to fail. And, but in the midst of failing, you learn. And so when the opportunity comes again, you learn from that failure and that failure help you to learn so that you can obtain what you truly desire and bring it close to you, bring it close to your heart and build wealth for generations to come all because you fail. Sometimes I wish you guys could fail more often. But most likely, I just want you to get it. And the reason you'll get it, because you're just one big deal away. Hey, God bless you. God keep you. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. Uh, and I'll be seeing you soon. For those who joined us for OPM this past week, Intensive, an amazing event. Uh, I don't know what to call that. Do we call it a meetup? Do we call it a conference? I don't know what that is. Um, but we got two more coming. The next one is going to be about analyzing deals. And uh, we may do it in Cincinnati. I don't know. I would like to go to Florida. I want to be somewhere warm. But by the time we do it, it will be warm. Um, but guys, God bless you. God keep you. 
And may God bless you beyond your belief, but not your capacity. And remember, you're one big deal away. Peace. Uh, if you don't know it,